Underlying the business case is just this simple learning model, this Pavlovian really, this conditioning response kind of thing where firms do things because of how they think stakeholders are going to react to it. If you do something good, you do something good because you think stakeholders are going to reward, reward you for that particular good activity. And if you do something bad, you avoid doing that something bad because you think that stakeholders are going to punish you for doing that particular activity. <clears throat> and then this creates a sort of conditioning where if a firm actually does something good and gets rewarded for it, it wants to habituate that activity. It wants to do more of that, get more of those cookies for doing those good things. And if it does something bad, if it reaches out its hands and touches a hot stove, it doesn't want to do that again, right? It extinguishes those bad behaviors. And over time, we should see this sort of habituation of good acts, this extinguishing of bad acts. And again, we should see this, uh, what we thought we had originally, this idea that corporate social responsibility is the dominant logic of all this. There shouldn't be these bad acts because they know that they're going to do the bad act and get punished for it. They want to get more of the reward for it. So stakeholders are the reason why this doesn't work as well as we would like it to work, because stakeholders themselves are imperfect. But my paraphrase Mitt Romney, uh, stakeholders are people, my friends. These are, uh, the stakeholders are all of us just as well, and all of us have lots of other things going on. Most of us, most of the time, have no idea what's going on at most companies. We're doing all, all sorts of cool things like sitting here at conferences rather than closely monitoring corporations, all their activities all the time, right? <clears throat> As a result, companies can do great things. They can do the most awesome act of social responsibility and nobody may notice. And they may not get rewarded for it and they may not want to do it again. Or they may do something horrendous and nobody says anything about it. And they may think that's fine, let's do that again. So we may get this wrong thing going on. The wrong things may be getting habituated, and the wrong things may be getting extinguished from the corporate repertoire as a result. <coughs> so what I want to just quickly put forth as an idea here is that we need to look much closer at what stakeholders are doing, how they're thinking, how they're behaving, in order to understand when corporate social responsibility uh, works and when it doesn't work. So <coughs> fundamentally, there's just this I call this the alchemy of altruism. How is it that doing good transforms into gold? How is it that you make money off being socially responsible? Well, it's these stakeholders down here that make the difference. And whether they choose to reward a firm or choose to punish a firm depends upon, uh, it's going to uh, determine that relationship. If they reward firms by giving them more support, more favor, then this act of social responsibility turns into gold for that particular firm. There's this positive relationship between corporate social responsibility and corporate financial performance. But we need to know what's actually going on in this alchemy here. Sometimes there is an alchemical reaction, and sometimes there isn't. So we've got to look closer at this reactive agent here, the stakeholders. <clears throat> so I just want to very quickly give you uh, a brief overview of a few things that I've uh, found that does go on with stakeholders. So one thing to, to consider with stakeholders is that when they look at an act of corporate social responsibility, how they interpret that act depends upon the firm engaging in that act. So they judge an act of CSR relative to the firm engaging in it, which means that the very same act gets different responses from different firms. Right? There is no one unit of social responsibility equals this one unit of financial performance as a result of that. And I'll run through a couple of uh, notions that underline that research. The other thing to note is that <clears throat> firms are often judged as a group, especially as an industry, or we can think of it more in terms of individuals. So I'm uh, a professor at Rutgers, if somebody does something bad at Rutgers, not that anybody ever does anything bad at Rutgers, <laughs> but were they to, we kind of all look bad. It's those Rutgers types, right? <clears throat> so this leads firms to be targeted by the same brush as well. Stakeholders think of firms not necessarily as individuals, but of, of a certain type, maybe an entire industry, for example. And then another point to think about is that, um, yeah, of course, stakeholders are very busy. They've got lots of other things to do. And as a result, they may not notice a lot of things that go on. They may misinterpret things that go on because they make snap decisions, or they react in biased ways given their limited attention, or they may just be lazy. They may decide to do nothing even if they do see bad things going on because they've got other things to allocate their time to. So let me start with the first point about the importance of the context in which uh, the CSR occurs. <clears throat> so consider the notion that uh, I think, uh, yeah, the, the uh, 
gentleman before me uh, talked about this in terms of a company can't just suddenly be known as a good company because it just suddenly invests a lot of money in being socially responsible. There has to be some background to it. It has to sustain this over time in order to be believable. <clears throat> well, that is uh, what I call stakeholder influence capacity. The idea that certain firms don't, if they suddenly invest in, in social responsibility, aren't going to be believable because it's not associated with their history. They haven't done this before. It's seen as false. So they have to instead develop this capacity to be believable to stakeholders over time by engaging in a consistent act, a uh, consistent level of social responsibility. So let me give you some examples and see how that might sink in. Again, 